Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I'm a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack in eight months studying via the Odin project. And in today's video, I wanted to go over a Reddit post and answers that I saw related to the kinds of interview questions you get in Ruby on Rails, specifically companies that are using Ruby on Rails as their main tech stack to put their product to market. If you like these kind of videos, please do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment below with your thoughts as well. Okay, back to this uh, article for today or these, this Reddit post rather. So here's the question. Uh, why do Ruby on Rails companies uh, don't ask data structure and algorithms questions in their interviews? And the reason I'm thinking about this is recently in a couple of my videos, I've been talking about uh, DSA, data structures and algorithms, and those kinds of questions, and whether or not you should study them, um, what my thoughts are on them, and I'll share them again here. I think the easy problems are very, very practical way just to get your head around a programming language when you're learning JavaScript or Ruby or Python, whatever it is you're learning, doing these simple problems, though abstract and nothing to do with web development, they're still very good at just, just turning those cogs in your mind, getting the problem solving uh, in gear for that, and um, just getting a good understanding of how to use the basic data structures within your the language of choice uh, and, and writing algorithms to solve the problem. I think, I think those are great. But when you start getting into the mediums and the hards, uh, I think they're stepping further and further away from relevance if your focus is on web development. Uh, and for me personally, for that reason, I've really just not done any of those. I've not been interested in doing them uh, and I've not had to do them yet to get a job. And I've, I've got two jobs now, though I have had to do them in other interviews and hadn't done very well because I'd never really practiced them. But this is, I think, a really good summary uh, as to why Ruby on Rails specifically, these kinds of companies don't ask data structures uh, and algorithms questions in their interviews. And, and that's been in my experience too. So where I work now is a Ruby on Rails monolith application uh, is what we use. And it was a practical take home test. I had to write, uh, I had to interact with a, uh, an API. Uh, and it was, it was fairly complex. There was a lot of reading to do to understand how the API worked and, and the, the methods that were provided in that uh, SDK. Uh, and, and then interacting with it was, was kind of a task to show that I was competent in Ruby on Rails. Now, I'm just gonna go through some of these answers here just because I think it might be interesting to, to show how different tech stacks may warrant different interview styles uh, and different types of companies have different interview styles. So this person said, I found that the DSA are generally a good indicator of a high quality software developer. I think that's debatable. Uh, many big tech companies follow it because of that. Although companies using Rails don't tend to ask these types of questions, uh, any reason why is that? Okay, this first point here. Are, if you are good at data structure and algorithms, does it also mean that you are a high quality software developer? Well, the two overlap in the Venn diagram for sure. If you're very good at DSA, chances are you could be very good at software engineering, but it's certainly not a guarantee because there's a lot more to software engineering than just solving a problem. There's the human side of it. There's the taking of abstract human-centric problems uh, and understanding them well enough that you can write code for them. There's being able to execute, there's being able to um, uh, work autonomously, there's being pragmatic in the way that you appro approach a certain problem, thinking three steps ahead as to you know how, how does it integrate with the product, uh, how is it gonna be reacted by the end users, understanding your clients and what their needs are. There's a lot more to writing good code. And I think there's a lot of people out there who might be very uh, I'd call them the, uh, I won't say the word because it's, it's, not, uh, it's not PC anymore, but they're geniuses, but they're also very stupid. Uh, and there's people that would be very good at data structures and algorithms, but they also just don't have a practical mindset, very little common sense, and they just can't write very good code or, you know, do things, normal things in the world very well. So that, that, that's where I would uh, draw the line there. Anyway, let's look at some answers here. I'll shut up and we'll listen to what other people have to say. Uh, so, because building a web app isn't that difficult, lots of people who don't know Big O notation or details of a binary tree can great build web apps, exactly. So Big O, binary trees, other DSA related questions and topics are really unnecessary for the most part when you're building 
80-20 of a web application, right? For, for 80% of the stuff that you're building, you just don't need to know this stuff. There are times when, okay, you need to write performant queries or understand uh, how to make your database more, more efficient, for example. These kinds of things are good. Understanding when to use one data structure over another, one method over another. Yes, it's good to know how they work at a, at a high level behind the scenes in terms of memory allocation and how efficient something is because there are going to be differences. However, in order to put that feature up so that somebody can go on a website, click buttons and do what they need to do, this kind of stuff is not necessarily required. Uh, and that's where code review is also very useful uh, to help optimize things where they need to be optimized. So as someone who's worked in all size companies, interviewed many, many people, I mean, a CTO, in CTO positions of successfully exit companies uh, where I've hired large teams. Uh, algorithm, data structure, etc. questions don't select for good candidates. They're almost completely random in terms of results. The exception is FANG interviews where the broad topics or questions are well known. Those interviews select for the people who are willing to put in the time and study hard. Yep, that's very true. If you're willing to put in the time and FANG is your goal, go for it. Study those, those hards and, and uh, mediums and hards of DSA. Uh, which is not the same thing as high quality software developer. It is true. If you're willing to put, like I said, I listed a whole load of reasons what makes uh, what beyond code, what makes someone a good developer. Um, just because you've put in the time for DSA and you get hired, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're still going to be a, a good all round developer. It just means you've very, been very good at writing some DSA stuff, which is stuff you can practice too. You can't really teach common sense. Uh, and, and, and that's one of these things that DSA does not test. Some of the worst employees I've hired uh, were excellent at the algorithm interviews. One was a PhD CS grad, for example, and could not actually get any real work done in terms or in any time frame at all. And some of the worst devs I know have hopped around fan companies because they crush the interviews but are just incapable of doing work. So yeah, I mean, that's case in point here. You can all, you can be let's say a, a genius, someone who's very good at DSA, but just absolutely rubbish at the job. Nece you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be very good. I will concede that if you are able to grasp the, the complexity and concepts in the mediums and hards of DSA, that chances are you could also apply that uh, and, and uh, become a good web developer. I totally agree with that. But it's those other things that make a good web developer that are beyond DSA and problem solving and, and the pure code that are not tested for. And I think that they are just as important. I've always said, I'd rather be a mediocre developer who has a lot of other skills than a very good developer, and that's my only skill. Because I'm gonna be far valuable as someone who can do many different things, someone who's a very strong generalist. Uh, okay, um, let's go on here. Yeah, so I'm glad to see this is a top comment. I'm a Rails dev with 12 years experience and I just failed a first round interview because I didn't know the algorithm going into it. I had 45 minutes to qualify as a senior developer. The interviewer hadn't heard of the fake gem, but somehow was qualified to reject me as a candidate. Okay, I don't think it matters necessarily that they've heard of a gem, but uh, I think that this is a fairly common thing for many people who have been doing Ruby on Rails development for any period of time. Uh, my good friend who's a Rails dev been doing it for I think 10 plus years now. Give him a, a data structure and algorithm interview and he will fail and he, he will tell you as much he will fail. He understands how to use Ruby on Rails very well to build what he needs to build. But the DSA stuff, we just don't practice that. We're too bu busy building uh, practical things that actually have value in the world. Um, you can tell I'm uh, not a big fan of DSA. Uh, okay, so I, uh, I have a similar process in the current company and I hate it. We have different interviews and some of them, um, some of them like to ask these kind of algorithms and DSA questions. I think we lost a lot of good candidates because of this. Otherwise, when I interviewed a candidate after them who had a good feedback and asked to solve a real world problem, i.e. make design for a real feature we have or read and refactor a piece of code from a project, the candidate instantly fails. Yeah, so there you go. It's, it's, it's where you place your time and effort. Do you want to place your time and effort in, in solving abstract problems or, or real problems that are going to actually add value uh, in the world? And do you want to test for that when you're hiring? If anyone here does hiring, please, if you use DSA, strongly reconsider using DSA. I think it's honestly a, I just think it's a terrible metric 
to find good candidates. On the, uh, on the interview, you should check ability to solve problems that the candidate would solve in the real work. Yeah, I agree with that. Google and other companies ask DSA because it's something that they're really uh, working on and their product requires development of new, very effective algorithms. Yeah, I think to a degree, uh, this is very true. At Google, they're not hiring someone to write uh, Rails code. You know, they're not, it, it's a completely different uh, ecosystem you know, within which those developers are going to be operating. Um, okay, how? Uh, blah, blah, blah. thanks for the comment. I interviewed for a position where I messed up the answer for their async interview question. They asked my opinion about the process after and I told them they should give me a test and, and see what I could do in a work situation. Uh, I don't think DSA could help them find the right person for the job. Months later, their ad is still up, um, which means they may or may not have found what they're looking for. Yeah, it's true. I mean, if you're looking for, if you're asking DSA kind of questions, you're probably going to hire someone who's good at them. But then you throw them you know, in, into your code base, in a Rails code base, and say, hey, build me this feature. I need it by the end of the week. If they don't know Rails, they're not going to be able to do that. It's, it's just chalk and cheese. Uh, so they look for web developers, not computer scientists. You can make perfectly fine web apps without deep knowledge of such. I agree. I do agree with this. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree that you can be a good web developer who does not know uh, very much or at least cannot solve problems implementing big O notation or complex state structure alg algorithms. What are your thoughts? Uh, computer science is cool if you want to work in a Linux kernel, but most companies need people to think at high levels in the business logic realm. Yeah, and that's true. The business logic realm is very uh, rarely talked about, and that is being able to understand what it is that you do uh, and, and what it is that you need to produce, how to add the most value to your clients. I, I think that's something that's never talked about when you're studying code. Um, okay, I, I thought that this answer was also very good uh, in terms of the ecosystem and the culture around Ruby on Rails and, and what kind of companies use Ruby on Rails and, and why they necessarily wouldn't necessarily ask data structure and algorithm questions. So uh, here they say, I would say it's strongly linked to the sense that Ruby on Rails is dedicated to generating value first and foremost. Startups and scale-ups are hungry for features. This is so true. When you're in a small company, they're more likely to use a tech stack that allows them to pivot and grow uh, quickly and, and, and evolve. And Ruby on Rails is one of those tech stacks, if not the tech stack for that. So more features means more clients, more upselling, more money. The budgets are thin, so they can't afford to either delay releasing features or to invest a lot of hands to ship polished things like big businesses do. That usually means there's always continuous improvement on almost everything. So I would say companies using Ruby on Rails usually stick to finding people with shorter onboarding times to the product and the team stack. If you can find someone who is comfortably, comfortable inside your budget or comfortably inside your budget, who has relevant business experience, a technical domain of the engineering stack and also excels at algorithms. Well, yeah, jackpot, but that's rarely the case. Yeah, I mean, excels at al algorithms is pretty much the last criteria here tacked onto a list of otherwise what makes a very good Ruby on Rails developer. And this is so true. So Ruby on Rails, you know, it's, it's, it's the tech stack for uh, MVP, but it, it goes beyond that too. A lot of companies have matured alongside using Ruby on Rails. But generally, those smaller, scrappy companies that need to ship quickly, ship fast, uh, and, and have quick onboarding times when you hire somebody, they, they need someone who can use the framework to build stuff. Okay, What's the point? If you are a company that's 10 employees large and there's maybe two or three devs, if you, ha if you hired somebody and you expected them to onboard and take six months to make, you know, any any meaningful contributions to the code well that's six months wasted and when you're in a, in a in a scrappy environment where budgets are thin you have a runway for example and you need to grow and and, and adapt and, and add value to your clients as quickly as possible you need someone who can hit the ground running and ruby on rails allows you to do that uh, where i got hired where i work now I was making productive code within the first month and I, you know, I was brand new. Within the first six months, I'd built full-fledged features in two-factor authentication uh, and, and, and uh, uh, SMS uh, two-factor authentication, you know, thousands of lines of code. And this is because I understand how Ruby on Rails works 
and I'm comfortable in the environment and the libraries that we use to be able to do this. And, and Rails allows that to happen. And I think in order to find someone who can come in and do that, you don't want to ask DSA stuff. You want to say, hey, build me this feature that interacts with this API or I don't know, build me a shopping cart that looks like this and accepts this kind of payment. You want someone who can build real stuff. Okay, we'll do a couple more here and I think you'll uh, you'll get the point. So uh, this person says, your experience doesn't match mine. I majored in computer science and stuck around for a, a master's degree. I've been working as an engineer for 19 years, 10 of those in Rails. Uh, I'm not mentioning to say I'm right by virtue of having more experience, but I'm so far out of college that I'm not sure I'd pass a DSA question. This stuff comes up so rarely that I don't think I could conjure up an answer on demand. And in my opinion, that makes it a poor interview question. Yeah, I agree. On top of that, the candidates who do well on these questions fall into two camps. Some are truly brilliant engineers, the kind who blow you away no matter how you interview them. True. The others are recent grads. They may not know HTML yet, and they may not understand why you need source control, but they sure as hell can link a list. Yeah, it, 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 that's very true because DSA is the thing. It's kind of the buzzword for, uh, I think, CS people doing computer science degrees and um, it's something that they all focus on and grind away at leak code because I guess generally the, the desire is to get a job in a company that uh, uses these to, to hire. Okay, we'll do one more here and then I think you'll have the point. We predominantly use Rails in my shop. If I were interviewing someone for an engineering position, I really don't care much about their data structure and algorithm knowledge. I care about how well they know Rails. Rails takes time to learn, even if you're a competent dev. And a lot of the lessons are learned through experience, uh, through experiencing the pain and mistakes made in the past. This just takes time. Someone knowing how to write a stack, queue, set, list, hash, etc. from scratch is basically irrelevant beyond understanding what they are. Knowing how to write a quick sort or binary search is great and all, but also rarely needed. I want to know if a candidate knows about web fundamentals like status codes or when to use one serialization schema over another, or how to de debug an active record query. Uh, or if they are capable of writing quality HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Or if they can write or debug a complicated SQL query. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with this. Uh, pe I mean, this I've said this many times, been iterated here many times. People just want someone who can come along and, and, and write code that works well for the context within which they're being hired. And it, it goes on. But many of the answers are uh, much the same. Um, I'll post a link down in the comments below if, if you're interested in looking in this, uh, at this in more detail. But yeah, I, I think that's quite interesting. And I'm, I bet you other tech stacks will, or companies using other tech stacks will probably have similar sentiments, especially smaller companies that are scrappy. They care about what you can do rather than, uh, you know, how well you can reverse a linked list. And I think though, to speak to Rails specifically, I think the, the reason that Rails aligns so well with me uh, individually is, is based on my tastes. I've never been a person who enjoys solving problems and puzzles just for fun. You know, I'll never sit down and do a crossword or do a Sudoku. I'd way rather be actually uh, uh, write, you know, creating something. Uh, board games, to me, that I just find them so pointless and boring. If I'm going to be focusing on something, I want to be creating and building something. Uh, and that's why I believe I really enjoy working in Ruby and Rails is because it is basically the, the developer's version of that. It's like, I don't care too much about, you know, the, the underlying fundamentals. Let's make some stuff. And the convention over configuration in Rails is built for that purpose. It's about let's make some stuff. And, uh, you know, if, if you're that kind of person, then maybe something like Ruby and Rails is, is going to suit you as well. But uh be curious, uh, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Um, are you, would you be interested in working in Ruby and Rails knowing that this is how a lot of the companies are? Uh, are you a big fan of data structure and alg algorithms? Um, what are your thoughts? I I'm curious to see what uh, other people think. But anyway, that wraps up this video uh, on why at least these people think companies using Ruby and Rails do not ask DSA style questions. Okay. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.